in 2001, uh, someone mailed um, anthrax to several news organizations and senators' offices. And the material that, that was sent to uh, the two senators and two news organizations um, showed a very high silicon signal when they did bulk analysis. And this led the FBI to consider the possibility that this material was, in fact, weaponized. And we by weaponized, it would have a material on the outside of the spores that makes them disperse easily and not clump together, and therefore be more respirable um, for uh, people, so they would cause more damage. 2001 in the fall, they convened a blue ribbon panel of experts from national labs and elsewhere in order to decide what the best analytical techniques were to use to analyze the materials from the attacks. So we were brought in as a, and identified on that panel as a, as a group with expertise in um, imaging and chemical analysis and specifically microanalysis that's analyzing small amounts of materials uh, from uh, microns down to nanometers uh, to determine not just what's present but where it's present in its context in the sample. A number of samples came pre-prepared by the FBI and we analyzed those specimens uh, with our methods, that is doing x-ray microanalysis at the nanometer level of regions not unlike this to determine what's present where. In particular, is there some signature of a weaponizing agent in the interstitial regions between spores? We were able to identify all the materials we saw as consistent with coming from, from the same source and no, no evidence of, of uh, intentional weaponization of these materials. I got a call Friday and was supposed to be in Washington for a press conference on Monday. Because of the, the person they suspect was involved, he committed suicide, um, there was a call out of Congress that uh, there was a feeling that the FBI made up some of the science or, or invented new science. And the FBI really wanted to show there was no really new science invented, just careful applications of existing science. Our credibility is, is beyond reproach, I think. Uh, I think that's one reason we got involved. Plus, we had the specialized equipment, the software, and the personnel to really answer this question that they were asking. We had uh, started to present our findings at uh, international and national conferences and we had published uh, conference proceedings. We had a couple patents, actually, that were filed at that point. And we had just executed a commercial license uh, with Thermo Norin. So that's uh, actually a, a license that's ongoing to this day, and it's uh, a product that sold over 400 copies. If, we're, if we can image a sample like this, we can also collect uh, analytical signals at every point in an image like that. And the, the techniques we developed in this group were to actually uh, take that data and, and analyze it in a statistical sense without bias as to what might or might not be present in the specimen. So that's why it's a successful commercial product because lots of people around the world and, and in this country, corporate labs, government labs, need to know where things are, not just what they are.